There is no better deck to upgrade right now than Royal Giant. Not only is it the strongest deck in the game, it will also be very good for a long time. This is the strongest Royal Giant deck right now on all areas of ladder, and it only costs three elixirs, so you're going to be able to cycle and outplay like everybody. If you're not going Royal Ghost at the bridge first play, you're not playing this deck right. Let me just tell you, because it is such a good play. It's always going to force out usually a better elixir trade for you since the opponent, you know, there's not too many good ways to stop a Royal Ghost. As you can see, we forced out Barbarians early on. So if he invests with anything here, I'm going to punish with the Royal Giant immediately. Yeah, so we're going up against a filthy lava player and he might go with something here. So we do go Phoenix E-Spirit just to make sure we can actually get a little bit more damage than usual. And now we can follow up with a royal ghost as well um since we can't really deal with the you know we can't really deal with i guess the lava hound since i did use my phoenix on offense we're just going to follow up here with this we're trying to cycle so that i can get back to my phoenix the reason i'm able to do this is because i don't really have to worry that much about you know the single lava hound if he's spending elixir on defense that means that he can't afford to back up his push so we're actually gonna wait a little bit we might not even phoenix this lava hound i might just fireball it because if you think about it lava hound's not that big of a threat like the the threat is the balloon the skelly drags all that wonderful nonsense so we just are up a thousand damage to begin the game so that's beautiful we'll go in with the uh uh you know what? i don't want to go with phoenix yet because if he puts like a lava in front of this then it's going to be annoying to deal with. So we'll go Royal Ghost uh, behind here. And we should be able to just go... How about Evo Skellies and then Phoenix? So that uh, the eye drag is distracted for a little bit. And it should allow us to actually kill it. So we'll go Log here. And we'll go E-Spirit as well. Does he get prodded fast enough? I think we should get the bird back. We do get the bird back. That's beautiful. That's what we needed right there. So a uh, bit of a risky play from us. But it's not too big of a deal. We're going to take maybe a little bit of damage while we wait to line this fireball up. And just like that, we're still up a thousand damage. If you don't count the damage split between the towers. So... Heading into double elixir. Let's let's get started here. I think we can go in with a royal giant pretty much whenever he decides to go in. But you want to make sure you have your fireball ready, because you know what? I don't want to get destroyed by the barbarians. It's not it doesn't sound very fun. The thing you can do a double elixir, which is really fun. Uh, speaking of speaking of cycling phoenixes in the back, we can cycle phoenixes in the back. So I do want to make sure that I protect this fisherman or protect this phoenix the best of my ability. We go with another ghost here. And just like that, I'm back to another phoenix. So I will go in with a fireball just to keep this phoenix alive for a little bit longer. We'll go e-spirit here. I'll actually log and we're just going to try and cycle a little bit. Um, we're going to go in with the fisherman here. And then we could just try and get another phoenix down at the last second. And that should be easy peasy. And just like that, we've taken a little bit of damage, but we've also dished out quite a quite a bit of damage as well. So here what I'm going to do is I'm just going to patiently, patiently, patiently shout out to who was it? DJ Academics who did that on that one song by Playboy Cardi. Yeah, what was it? Control? Yeah, anyways, uh, it doesn't work out there because he, uh, he Evo zapped, but it's okay because it doesn't really matter. We forced out an Evo zap. We'll go Phoenix and just like that, you can't really go with a balloon behind this Phoenix. I'm going to use a fisherman to actually just keep this Phoenix alive for a little bit longer. And so now we should be able to just, you know, just chill a little bit here. We'll go in maybe with a Skeletons and then Royal Giant to distract this uh, eye drag temporarily. I almost said E-Drag. I keep confusing the two. We'll go Fireball just like this to reset it. So that way there's no way he can stop us from getting two beautiful Royal Giant hits. Just like that, beating Lava Hound with only one air counter, ladies and gentlemen. There are three basic strategies you want to use with this deck. <laughs> okay, well, you know what? Go Skelly Barrel at the bridge so I can't do my intro. Thank you, Badoo. Appreciate it. Three main strategies. One, you want to try and stay up in Elixir whenever you can so that you can be more aggressive with your Royal Giant pushes. That means, you know, go Royal Ghost whenever you can. Try and get your opponent's Elixir low by forcing out responses. And see, yeah, now we have an Elixir lead, but we do have a uh, Mega Knight to deal with. So this will be very fun. Um, we'll actually go Fisherman over here. I'll just Phoenix as well for these bats. And we can pretty... <laughs> we pulled the midair. That was kind of funny. I'm just going to go E-Spirit last second here to pull the Mega Knight, activate the King Tower, and this will actually be a very good start for us. We're going to take, what, 200 damage and be activating the King Tower and just going in aggressively with them. <laughs> Why would you do that? What? What does that even do for you? Okay, well, I guess the Firecracker kills the Phoenix Egg from 50 miles away, but as you can see, this is the first point proven in the first minute of the game. We just want to defend with... Uh, okay. So the second tip is abuse Royal Ghosts, which is, you know, not very... <laughs> 
He didn't do what I wanted him to do there. But what he does do is create a ton of pressure and he's going to be able to apply, you know, just... I guess very good elixir tracking abilities for you because if you think about it elixir tracking is kind of hard as a beginner you're like how am I supposed to know how many elixir he has at all times it's a it's deeper than that it's like hey if he goes I drag in the back at 10 he's at six and so now I know if he was to go with like Megan or something he'd be very low on elixir so we would be able to capitalize off that that's what elixir tracking comes down to it doesn't you know you don't need to know your opponent's exact elixir count at every time that's not it's not crucial, so um, here we can go in with the fisherman. Obviously, now see, like you, you can tell, he's at no elixir now. So everything that we do with our defense here will be, you know, uncounterable because he just went in with a punch of elixir. So um, that's how you don't have to worry about getting predicted with spells or anything like that. Um, it helps you stay kind of ahead of your opponent. So I, I recommend always trying to track elixir and track cycle as well. So uh, we don't have to worry about getting skarmied, obviously, because the Royal Giant absolutely destroys the skarmy when he's evolved. So uh, we'll just get a ton of damage there. We've still only taken 500. So we'll go Phoenix. We'll go Royal Ghost. We have to go East Spirit as well here. I guess we didn't have to, but he, he helps us deal with that. We'll go Skeleton underneath so I don't get embarrassed and lose my entire tower to a you know 50% HP I drag so we do take a little bit of excess damage but it's because you know it's a little bit difficult sometimes to deal with the um, the excess inferno dragons and errors when you when you only have like one card we'll just predict the skeleton army like that but error becomes a bit of a nasty you know counter to us when we only have the phoenix but we're able to get out of that pretty easily so you know what good game right there i feel bad there's no royal ghost for us to start off the game with but that leads us right into tip number three which is to try and abuse your evo skellies which is you know kind of similar to the royal ghost and where we want to use the royal ghost early and often but with the skellies you want to cycle them as early as possible and keep a close eye on what your opponent has to deal with the evo skellies this can be spells this can be a valkyrie this can be a wizard all that type of stuff so we're gonna go into the royal ghost here uh or royal giants i confused the two way too much bro <laughs> and we're gonna just let that valkyrie do her thing obviously he goes in with the tornado here so i'll we'll actually go phoenix and this should help us you know we'll get we'll get one royal giant hit so it's not that crazy but we can actually follow up the royal ghost and back up this uh phoenix and we don't take any damage from the xe either so i'll actually go east spirit in case he has something for us to east spirits i you know it just helps i guess apply a little bit extra pressure and the phoenix tanking for the royal ghost and as you can see here he has log valkyrie xe tornado so i don't think we're gonna be able to apply tip number three today but you know it's it's okay the evo skellies are brilliant sometimes and other times they're just you know they're not all that and it's okay because they're one elixir you don't they don't have to be the game breaking card every single round you know they could just it can help you on defense sometimes. It can just be an okay card. After all, they are one elixir. So we'll be able to wrap up this XE pretty cleanly here. And against decks like this, where they don't have a big DPS unit, we're going to be able to get so much Royal Giant damage. So you just want to time your Royal Giant push for when they're low in elixir or when they don't have maybe an XE or something. Because, you know, you could maybe get a bunch of Royal Giant damage, right? But if your opponent gets a massive counter push, then it's kind of really difficult to defend them when you could normally defend if you had even elixir. So he's going to tornado once again here. This is okay because we already got the damage that we were looking for. We actually don't have to do anything else to defend this Valkyrie. I'll just go Royal Ghost. And I'm still waiting for, you know, to be, I guess, intimidated. <laughs> he hasn't played anything crazy here. He's just got a normal, normal hog XE deck, which is... You know, not too annoying. All the mid ladder hog rider decks, too, by the way, are so easy to deal with. All you have to do is get the fisherman uh, to King Tower activate on the first play. We're going to. Oh, what a. Oh, my goodness. What a pull from downtown. Hello? Fisherman's cooking today. I probably should have gone Royal Giant opposite lane, but I'm not too worried, to be honest, here about him just tornadoing back and doing all that stuff i don't really care we're going to be able to either get a hit or get massive damage in the other lane and we do both you know what we do both we got a hit and the royal ghost is just uh, applying tip number two and, okay he's just uh, completely ignoring it jeez we're just going to end the game just okay well <laughs> i didn't really expect him to completely ignore the royal ghost but your opponents, especially at lower levels of ladder, can panic and not be able to defend dual lane pressures. So that's kind of leading us into tip number four. I didn't give you tip number four at the start of the video, but, you know, I kind of realized it as I was playing dual lane pushing. 
extremely important against decks where your opponent has like this really good royal giant counter and it keeps on working like if you physically just can't break through the, the like oh it's it's e golem we got to focus but if you just can't break through whatever he has whether it be a building or a mini peck or something like that you can <laughs> sorry i was about to say mini pecker and i feel like that's inappropriate for the for the poor peck of family so we'll go and log here just like that and we'll actually go phoenix as well uh, i'm not really worried if the phoenix gets voided or anything because that will actually help us deal with these skellies from the uh the skeleton giant here so we'll go in with the royal ghost as well take a little bit of damage and counter push the bejesus out of him that sounds pretty good to me so all i'll do here is just chill actually i'll just chill here and i'll fireball and just like that we should hit the second wave and we should kill the night witch instantly we actually force an evil wizard as well and we're gonna get almost all of our damage back so i like that a lot but yeah tip number four we're gonna royal giant in the back a lot versus cycle decks and other fast uh decks or decks with very good royal giant counters so that way we don't have to deal with you know trying to force you know bang our head against the wall and try and break through it we're instead going to be able to royal giant that back and that way all we have to do is cycle some cards force out his royal giant counters and slap another royal giant in the opposite lane so now that he doesn't have the wizard in cycle we can actually go in here with this royal giant and do quite a bit of damage so uh, that should be nice we'll go in uh maybe we'll just go in phoenix and log here we take a bunch of damage too but it's okay um the royal giant does his job there so we'll go i think we'll just go fireball here we'll lose our poor phoenix but that's okay it doesn't really matter too much we'll go in with the royal ghost and just like that, we can also go skeletons here. And we should be able to wrap this up. If we don't, that's still no big deal. It doesn't really matter too much because we're going to be able to counter push and take his tower anyways. So um, I'm actually going to bank on the Royal Ghost to do our job for us. We're going to go Fisherman over here. He actually goes in. We can find some way to take his tower later, whether it be a Royal Ghost or what what have you. We go Royal Ghost like this. Royal Ghost going to kind of be the MVP of today's game, hopefully. Hopefully we'll go, I'll actually just go RG because I am i don't trust myself. I don't think we're going to be able to take that tower unless I like actively try to take that tower. So we're going to go into the Phoenix. We're going to go in with the Royal Ghost Heavy here. And we're just going to apply a massive counter push in this lane. He can wizard it, but that's not going to be the greatest counter. So we're also going to go Skeletons over here and Royal Giant immediately. So that way, we although we do give up the, the tower to the Night Witch over here, we're actually going to end up with a ton of damage. So I'm fine with this. We're going to Fireball as well. And we're actually going to apply even more pressure with the Royal Ghost. And unfortunately, he went with the Skelly King, so it was a good timing Skelly King from him. Uh, he's probably going to go in with an Eagle and push. We just got to get our Phoenix ready. If he goes with the Eagle, and we'll just try and pull it to the King Tower or something like that. I don't want a Fisherman yet. I'm actually going to Fisherman now to make sure that we actually lock onto this wizard and we don't pull a, you know, we don't want to pull an e golem into our tower. That wouldn't be, you know, the greatest play of all time. He could go with the with the Evo Skellies here and we're just going to log it away, even though we didn't need to because Evo RG kills the Skellies instantly. So that's GG's anyways. Bit of a sloppy game, but we played it pretty well and that's how you need to play against fast e golem decks and beat down decks like that. Unfortunately, we do not have, oh, this might be a Royal Giant Mirror matchup. I, well, it's pretty early to you know predict what deck my opponent has but when i was casting the other day i actually managed to pre predict the opponent's deck 14 out of 15 times it's pretty good i guess it wasn't the opponent's deck it was just the people i was watching and i did you know wait for them to play like two cards but i still think that was pretty impressive so you know what i am pretty good at gauging people's decks and it does definitely look like we're facing a mirror matchup here so you know what we can do is actually go in with the royal giant in the back that's what i see a lot of top ladder royal giant players do and then we can just use the fisherman in the same lane to actually pull uh this royal giant here and we're waiting because usually they always play something in the middle for the fisherman to predict it so skeletons will actually pull here and we'll actually go royal ghost as well should kill these skellies instantly he's actually going to pop up in front for a second as well that's pretty big so he's going to pull the fisherman pulls are oh what do you have a bowler for Ew, brother all right but this is a lot of damage here this is way more than he got so you know we'll, we'll take that uh, I can go in with another Royal Giants as soon as I want, honestly, but since I'm in the lead, I'm going to wait to just see if he backs up this Fisherman at all. So he doesn't. So what we're going to do here is just log back this Fisherman and we should take no damage. And just like that, he's like one card off Fisherman. So we could go in with another RG, but I'm actually just going to wait here. I'm going to wait for a second. What I'm going to do instead... Actually, I am going to go RG immediately here. I'll go Fisherman in the middle to predict his Fisherman. Uh, he goes in with Evo Skellies. It doesn't really matter because as soon as he stomps the ground, he's going to rid you know, the rid the earth of all of them. And Okay, I guess nice timing from him there. Uh, we should be able to wrap up these though. And we can just go Phoenix. And then we can just Rogue Oh, we need to deal with those, man. All right. 
So this is okay. We go E-Spirit just like this. He's going to pull our Ghost off, which I guess is a little annoying. But although we, you know, have a kind of sloppy, I guess, situation right there. It's not that big of a deal. We're still in the damage lead by 600. Most important thing is just making sure we're not getting predicted by the um, the skeletons in the middle, stuff like that. So as you can see here, we don't actually get predicted by that. E-Spirit still, <laughs> still doesn't do the job against the Evo Skellies because you know what? They're pretty good. They are pretty good. So we'll go uh, just E-Spirit in here, try and get us a little bit more RG damage. And as you can see, we're going to get at least two hits, maybe three. Give me three. Give me three, baby. We're going to go with a preemptive feed phoenix for that there and we kind of have to worry about this lane but not really we can go just go fisherman up here east spirit as well he does get an east spirit down late to predict that but that's okay it doesn't really matter too much all we have to do is drop a log and drop another phoenix just kind of waiting for him and that'll be ggs just like that so we play a mirror matchup we do play a little bit better than the opponents using some key strategies we're able to wrap them up do some pretty good damage you know, overall, some good wins. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and have a great rest of your day.